Organic Pest Management, narrated and developed by Julie Larson. As the old saying goes, keep your friends close, but keep your enemies even closer. And very, very true from, for the, the pests and the diseases and the weeds that we'll be talking about for this uh, week. So before planting, you want to know what likes the crop that you're going to be planting. Be very familiar with uh, insects that like to eat it, the weeds that have problems with it. Know those potential problems before you even plant your crop. Because for some things, it can be almost overwhelming, uh, the things that like to eat it, or that disease can be a problem. And maybe you want to choose the, uh, the most resistant uh, crops, a uh, particular variety of a crop that you want to grow is resistant to a lot of diseases or resistant to insects. Uh, nothing is resistant to weeds, that's for sure. Uh, so you want to be ready before you even uh, put that first crop in the ground. When you do start seeing some crop damage, first thing you need to do is you need to identify what it is. Is it from a pest causing the problem? Uh, is it from uh, a particular um, bacteria or a virus? Uh, there are many uh, fact sheets and information, pictures on the internet, they can help you get to the point where you understand what you're dealing with because if you're treating for a bacterial disease when actually it is uh, vine borers that are going in and, and killing your pumpkins then you are way behind uh, in trying to treat. When you talk about pest uh, insects especially you know, how much, how much can you lose before there's really a problem? Sure, you can have a few holes in your leaves or um, maybe even hold, they take out entire leaves or sections of a plant, but you're still going to get the part of the plant that you want. Uh, so you need to identify what, exactly how much can your plant take before there really is a problem. Maybe you don't need to treat at all. What kind of pest is bothering your crop is a really important first part of figuring out uh, how you're going to treat and how you're going to manage for this problem. Mammals do a lot of damage, so maybe rabbits that are eating all your turnip or beet greens off the top, so you won't be able to sell that part. Uh, what do you do if you have birds uh, you've just planted? a bunch of young seedlings. Many of the birds like to go in and just are very curious and start pecking off the tops of them. In the case of insects, uh, is it an insect that sucks the nutrients out of the plant? Or is it a biting, eating of the leaves in the case of a caterpillar? Uh, so identification is crucial in the, in the first stages. Knowing the life cycle of the pest that uh, is creating a problem for your crop is really critical in determining how you go about managing it. So do they overwinter? Uh, is it important that you clean out uh, and take away all the debris uh, from that plot of land? Do, or do they migrate? Maybe they don't uh, come here until the middle of June or July because they're migrating up from the south. When do you expect to see them? So if they are, uh, do, is it something that comes in late August or is it something that is going to arrive very early in the spring as soon as the soil gets to a certain temperature? Uh, and how many life cycles before winter hits? Um, can be very critical. If you just if you think it's only going to have you really have a problem with it in June, you're not going to be ready for the next 
uh, batch that hatches out in maybe August. So knowing especially what that life cycle is can really help you manage it for the long haul. Three important parts to uh, disease. And I suppose this goes for all disease, but uh, in particular we're talking about plants. So you have to have a pathogen. Uh, so it can be a uh, bacteria, virus, fungal infection, nematodes, or uh, so let's think of what a particular bacterial wilt, which you will find many times on computer on uh, cucumber plants. Um, so if that's your pathogen, you have the uh, an environment that's conducive for the carrier or for the um, uh, what's going to bring that disease? So in this case, uh, cucumber beetle are the uh, they're the environment that the pathogen likes to live in and gets carried around in, and then the host, which will be the cucumber plant. So the bacterial wilt doesn't do anything to the cucumber beetles; it just uh, stays in the beetle's body, and then when the cucumber beetle goes on the uh, cucumber plant that it is spreading that bacterial wilt uh, to that cucumber plant. And so those uh, three things together and you have a disease. The different ways that disease can be transmitted from plant to plant or to the plant in the first place is, is very important to understand for, uh, to further uh, be able to manage that particular disease. So some diseases are found in the soil, as in the case of the verticillium wilt on tomatoes, kind of creates like a, uh, looks like they start with some brown spots and some yellow leaves at the bottom, and then they kind of, it kind of works its way up uh, until the plant is finally just brown and dead. Uh, and this is soil, very hard to get rid of, uh, you can rotate the tomatoes uh, to different areas, but this uh, wilt uh, will stay in the soil for many years. So if you start seeing that, you may just not want to plant those tomatoes in that area. Uh, another way that they can be transmitted is through the air, as in the case of fire blight on apples. just uh, goes from apple tree to apple tree on a moist, windy day. They can also be transmitted through insects, as in the case of the cucumber beetle, which we already talked about. One of the very hardest things for organic growers is managing weeds. There are some different ways that you can go about this. And it's probably going to be several of, the, several of these all put together during a season. One of the first things uh, you think about is cultivating. Um, going through with a hoe, a uh, wheel hoe, to get all the very young seedlings of the weeds. Get them out of your um, air, uh, crop areas as soon as you can. The bigger they get, the harder and more time it will be to, to do away with them. Another thing you can do is to plant a cover, cover crop, especially the season right before you're going to plant something. Uh, choose a cover crop that can do some nitrogen fixing, but also can uh, suppress weeds. A few that come to mind, a great one, um, that's for soil, uh, lightening your soil, is buckwheat. Uh, can, uh, is great. It can really uh, compete with the weed seeds, grows uh, quite fast, uh, shades out any of the weeds that come through. Um, so buckwheat's a good one to keep in mind. Another way, thing for weed management, of course, is mulch. Uh, laying down a, either a, a thick uh, 
slab of straw in between your rows and around your plants. Also can keep water in, which is important. Uh, also black plastic or different colors of plastic can uh, be huge for keeping weeds out of the garden. Flame throwers, uh, they actually burn with propane. You carry them on your back, go around and you hit the weeds with uh, a burst of fire. Great for certain plants, especially when they're younger uh, that maybe don't have a really strong root development yet. There are some uh, OMRI, OMRI listed products that you can use. Not that many for weeds. Uh, you have to be very careful what you're using. And the, one, the main thing to keep remember, you want to remember is the better you can be at keeping out the weed seeds, the better you'll be better off the next year. So if you can mow, if you have a chance to mow before anything goes to seed, even if you have to dig it out of there, uh, if you have to um, even to flame the weed seeds so that they're not viable in the soil. Very, very important. You will, over the years, your soil will really, really benefit from these different methods, but also uh, your, uh, your weed problems will go down quite a bit. You're never going to get rid of all of the weeds. Just keep that in mind. There are many resources that can help you find the information you need for your uh, pest and disease management. Internet's great. Just be very careful uh, when you look at the sites that uh, they're from a reputable source. Lots of lots of books on organic growing can give you some great methods and techniques that we've discussed. Also, organic farm supply catalogs. Many of them have whole listings of all the different uh, pests, what they, uh, the, they have pictures of the damage they do, what they look like, and then of course they will also offer you the uh, items that can take care of those problems. Just be sure once again, you need they need to be OMRI listed. And then your local county extension office uh, for some human contact is a great place to uh, many times you can take either the weed or you can take the insect or even the plant that's having the damage, a leaf, and you can go there and ask them what they think this is, what the problem is, and they have uh, specialists that can help you determine the cause and can be helpful finding you ways to solve the problem. Uh, just, again, be sure they understand that you are a certified organic uh, farmer uh, because that will make a dif big difference of course in how they um, what direction they send you for help so don't get discouraged uh, it can be a real challenge all these different problems uh, out there but uh, you just have to be on top of things get the information you need and don't wait until it's a really big problem First thing you see that insect, you have to jump right on it and take care of it because there will be many more coming along. Uh, the weeds are the same thing. Don't wait a week. Uh, get in there and really take care of those problems before it is just is too overwhelming to do. But if you take it one day at a time and really just stay on top of it, uh, you will you'll be well paid. Uh, for your efforts.